Bye. Brighten up those dark mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter. Mornings at the cabin. Mornings at the cabin, indeed. Wheeler and Lecter. Kill Muffin with you on your Tuesday morning. Mornings at the cabin brought to you by Aurora Ford. Driving the North in the brand new 2021 Bronco Sport. Available today. Not to mention the all new 2021 F 150. Wheeler, Lecter. Tuesday. It is minus 32. I hope you plugged in your receptacles last night. Um, your receptacles for gas and travel. Your vehicle. Um, because it got a little chilly. A little chilly. A little bit. Mm-hmm. It's back to being chilly again, but apparently tomorrow it's supposed to be like minus 7. I mean, if you haven't figured it out by January. That it's winter? Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny, actually. It's we were, we were out for a... I was for a brisk walk yesterday with the pup, and uh, I was walking uh, up into Tin Can Hill, and I was like, wow, you know what? Winter's really here. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I had that thought, because we had such, so many arrested like starts to the winter. It was like a little cold, and then it got to plus two or right. whatever. Uh, yeah, it's been here for a couple of months, but every yeah. once in a while, it takes a while to sink in. Yeah. You know what? January 4th? <laughs> It's not kidding around anymore. I don't think so. I, I think, think it's here no. to stay. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see another. But then you have uh, years like a couple years ago where it gets to plus 20 in March. So yeah. who's to say what could happen tomorrow? And then we all get fooled thinking yeah. that winter's over. Yeah. And then it goes on for another two months. <laughs> and it's got that big slushy bit in the middle like Edmonton. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. No. We have all that to look forward to. Yeah. Here. It's just January. I hope everyone's having a good start to their week, a good start to the year, a good start to the reinvigoration of going into work. Mm. It's getting brighter. It is. We are gaining light every day. That's not meant. We weren't meant to be a downer here. It's just that winter's here. We're uh, wrapped in its <laughs> steely embrace. Here. Mornings at the cabin, the podcast. You know, we didn't do uh, like I, you know, we wish you happy new year. We talked about new years. We talked about what we did for new years. We talked about, we touched on last year. We don't need a year in review of last year. I, no. You know what? You I already did that. With I your, didn't uh, actually see one all all break. Usually during the break. A year in review? Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't have cable, so it's hard to find stuff. I was actually making right. a joke the other day about how after four New Year's, we didn't have like a news program to go to to watch, to be like, oh, this is in Edmonton. They're having a first night or whatever. Right. So we thought we'd, we'd find something. And we couldn't. Amazon, uh, if you go on Amazon Prime Video, they've got live feeds from, from Global. Right. So like, oh, we'll click on the Edmonton one. It'll be live from Edmonton. They'll show something, blah, blah, blah. But Edmonton's pretty much in lockdown, so you can't really have anything. So what we got was just those things that play at the airport, which is like an hour of news or half an hour of news, and then it repeats ad right. nauseum. Yeah, at yeah. the end of the 11 of 11.59 one, um, the, the two people came out in the hats, and they're like, well, Happy New Year. It's been quite a ride, as we all know, and we just <laughs> want to wish you all a safe and happy New Year. Click. And it goes to the next... The next cycle. There's no like what? countdown or anything. It's just because it's just pre recorded. Yeah. So it just went click and it went like into the middle of a segment and the next cycle of programs. You know what? Fair enough. <laughs> just, That's yeah. all 2020. You know deserves. what? And we were just like, oh, I guess there's no countdown. Well, I looked at my watch, or my uh, my phone. Well, Happy New Year, babe. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? That's about all it deserves. Yeah. So like, just keep totally. talking. It's yeah. fine. Um, Let's we all don't just need a flush the toilet simultaneously. Yeah. <laughs> move on so, to the next year. So we didn't get a year in review like you usually do on cable, like even on like Sportsnet or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I've read a lot of year in review. actively search one out, really. Yeah. Because um, we kind of all know this 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 year's kind of melting into the right. Yeah. Right? Here's a kind of like crazy year in review thing for yes. you. Uh, Kobe Bryant died one year ago. Yes. Yeah. Ju- yeah, like a like year ago, two ago weeks now. from today or something like that. Like yeah. just, just under a year. Yeah, there's a lot of things that happened in 2020 that are like, well, that seems like forever ago. Yes. Yeah. It really does. It really does. Like that, so, of course, you know, Mike and I did the sports show last night. And you know, so I was kind of looking up, like considering doing some year in review stuff. There is kind of enough stuff going on right now yeah. that, uh, you know, didn't really need to spend an hour doing what didn't happen in 2020 what or didn't what happen? postponed I mean, you could do that. You could do a year in review of all the things that didn't happen. For yeah. example, you remember the Olympics were supposed to be this year? Yeah. 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 And those didn't happen. Didn't happen. Or the Arctic Winter Games. Yeah. Or anything until That's right. further notice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, of course, the first thing that came up because, yeah, it happened in early January 2020. Yeah. Kobe Bryant passed away. And, you know, of course, that was huge, mm-hmm. like huge yeah. news. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, when, when of course, and I knew that, but still like opening it and like reading it again and thinking about it, yeah. man, that seems like 
way longer ago than one year. Yeah. It's crazy. Absolutely. Um, everything seems very drawn out. It's like we put it, we had a pause and there was a bit of like a, a comatose for a few months. Yeah. Even for people who continued working. Like I, I continued working. We didn't stop working. Yeah. And, but still felt like that middle of the year. It's just like, it's like it went slow and it's also a blur. Yeah. You know, and April um, and May just didn't happen. Didn't happen. Yeah. You know, we sneezed and it was winter. March was very exciting. March was very, <laughs> oh, man, I couldn't believe it was going. Well, cause every day there was something new. Yeah, there was every, a new every episode hour of there COVID was corner. I mean, yeah. You know? Yeah. That was good watching. That was good watching. He'll be back at it. Um, now we have a movie, we have a, a TV studio. So. Yeah. But the go. whole point of this, Lecter, you get me off point all I'm the sorry. time. This is I'm all sorry. your fault. This uh, meandering mornings at the cabin is constantly your fault. Brought to you by. Brought to you by meandering. Go from point to point without actually ever connecting anything. Um, no, what, the one year in review thing that stuck out to me this year, just at the end of the year. Yellowknife had seven car fires oh, in 2020, yeah. but officials aren't aren't raising an eyebrow. They say that's that's pretty normal for like, but maybe it's just because they're covered so much now because we have a lot of media outlets now, right? So right. NNSL, we got us, we got CBC, and we're all kind of competing for stories. So like maybe car fires have been more plentiful in past years and we just haven't reported on them because it's mm. like, ah, it's not a car fire. Yeah. But now a car fire is like, hey, there's a car fire. So... I wanted to do the top seven car fires of the year countdown. Okay, okay. All right, number yep. seven. That one in front of the liquor store. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's number seven? I That's really number thought seven. that would, that would uh, place the, uh, wow. Number six, the other one by the liquor store. Okay. Wow, the liquor store fire is not getting a lot of love. Number five, right across from the liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> There's like three, one by the parking lot, one by the diamond store, and then, and then another one in the alley behind the behind the liquor store. That's the that's you know what those are the top three. Let me guess number four. Uh, number four, the uh, car Bigelow. inside the liquor store. The car inside the liquor store. Um, yeah, Franklin Avenue near uh, Forest Drive was the last one, so that's the that's the number one. That was the number one because that one happened in front of the Frank <laughs> on Franklin Avenue in front of CBC, and right, that that was yeah. the moment where like I. I was taken to task for you were kind of poking fun. I was yep. just poking funsies. I wasn't saying that like funsies. they're bad at their job. I was poking funsies. Yeah, just saying because NNSL has a uh, has a policy that they don't mention other media sources. Although I think they've mentioned us once or twice. Maybe, but they yeah, have pr- pretty they, like they they, they go back and they forth. don't mention and it's and yeah. it's funny to see some of them gymnastics that have to be done yes. in order to do that. So the headline was of that car fire was like car catches fire outside of pool or whatever yeah. it was or like at Across the, the street at the intersection pool. of this and this. It's like you mean right in front of the CPC building? <laughs> you mean the only like thing you can pick out in that picture yeah, the only that yeah. there's a picture from the parking lot of the swim pool facing the cbc building so the car fire is in the middle of a big picture of the cbc building <laughs> and they say at the intersection of circle k and franklin avenue or the inter- and then they mentioned the intersection of forest drive and franklin avenue and then they mentioned the- and then they mentioned the tennis courts it was just funny yeah that's all that's why that's the number one car fire of the year you know just like just like a hop Skipping a jump away from the old mini golf. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just south, that, uh, just south of Tommy Forest. <laughs> um, Frame Lakes, like just yonder. If you were to pick a school for the building that this car fire was in front of, were it going to school, it'd be William Mack. There's a church nearby. There's a church it's nearby. Yeah, it's just uh, up a, down building. a step from the Seventh Day Adventist Church, yeah. right across from the old mini golf. Yeah. And there's and something that's our, else in the way. And that's oh. our year in review. Mornings at the cabin, the podcast where we cut out all the great music and you're left with the rest. Mornings with it or at it. Mornings at the cabin, brought to you by Aurora Ford, driving uh, north. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to, you shared this story with us uh, yesterday on the, uh, on the group chat. Uh, just one of these outrageous stories from the world of the internet. Do you care to? Sure. Go. So it came up on my news feed, and, you know, when you see a story titled Bean Dad. Bean Dad. Well, you got to read it. I mean. As in Bean? As in B-E-A-N? Yes. Okay. Bean. What other? Well, I could have Bean. Oh, Bean a Dad. Yeah. yeah. I see. I see. No, this is is Bean Dad. Uh Uh-huh. B-E-A-N. The homonym. Father. Mm Mm-hmm. Arguably. Mm Mm-hmm. The synonym. Uh, So a story, and, and this is all... Part of what I love about this is so it was it was written by the BBC and yep. it is entirely based on basically a Twitter argument. Yeah. 
Which uh, the best articles are based on these. A dad in the U.S. who boasted about his parenting skills after telling his hungry nine-year-old daughter <laughs> to open a tin of beans or go without food <laughs> has caused outcry on social media. Ah. And I'm hooked. He was uh, quoted as saying to his nine-year-old, nine-year-old daughter, open it your damn self. <laughs> no, he didn't do that. So basically, this guy is a, uh, his name is John Roderick. He's a musician. Apparently, he's a podcaster, too. He goes under the name Johnny Rod. Johnny Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Story goes on. After six hours, the child successfully opened the tin yeah. and was finally allowed to eat. Allowed. He said in now deleted tweets. <laughs> oh. The dad claimed it was a victory for, quote, good parenting, um. but other parents accused him of neglect, while some suggested he invented the story to get attention. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I don't know. Okay, I we're don't not going to go. would make that up. We can't go so far to believe that people would make things up on the internet for some sort of point system or upvoting, if you will. <laughs> but he didn't get any points out of this. Like his daughter, sure. She yeah. figured out how to open a can. Good points for her. <laughs> she gets points. I don't think dad gets points. So in the, in, I don't know why he would make this up to, <laughs> you know, bring on this. Well, he got a BBC article out of it. He's a podcaster and a musician. I see. Oh, okay. All Podcasters right. Podcasters and musicians are a shifty lot. That's right. Yeah. You can do anything for attention. Yeah. Actors you can are lean not included. into it. Yeah. yeah. New album. New beans. album. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's, 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 what's crazy about this bean story is it comes on the cusp of my new album. Johnny Rod and the Rick Rollers. <laughs> Uh, so Twitter users, of course, then nicknamed him Bean Dad, Bean Dad as the incident caused another <laughs> heated debate on social media where parenting methods are a frequent cause of disagreement. Good. I didn't know that, but I mean, I they must like be. That's where that in the Twitter verse, everybody disagrees. And hey, again, though, I mean, uh, big ups to uh, Twitter for coming up with that name, Bean Dad. <laughs> Well done. He shared the story Saturday on Twitter, explaining that it began when his daughter asked him to make baked beans. Make me bake beans, Daddy. After she brought him uh, a tin opener and a yep. can of beans, he asked her how she thought a tin opener worked, he said. <laughs> when she said she didn't know, he realized, quote, a teaching moment had just dropped into my lap. How do you think that thing works? Dropped into your lap. Like, so basically, you realized that you never taught your daughter how to o- yeah. use a can opener yeah, yeah. before. Oh, I, I, it, it's, it occurred to me that I had not shown my daughter this simple process. Uh, <laughs> so and- then instead of teaching her how yeah. to use a yeah. can opener, you just crossed your arms and said, figure it out. Figure it out. Let's see what you got, so big that's, shot. That's not a teaching moment at all. <laughs> That's a, uh, uh, I don't want to say neglect, but that's a leave you on your own moment. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a hang you out to dry moment. Yeah, that's not a teachable moment. Teach what it is. The moment would, would include you teaching her how to use it. That's what a teaching moment would be. He went on to say, quote, apocalypse dad was overjoyed. Which is what he calls himself, I uh, guess. Apparently. Yeah, and yeah. he's speaking in the third person, as all good podcasts or musicians yeah. do. Because, of course, when you're living in your bomb shelter during the apocalypse, you <laughs> need to know how to open beans. And it's your last can of baked beans. You can't just open it for your daughter. She's got to open them herself That's because right. now she's got to, you know, figure out how to survive. I mean, bean Probably dad might be long dead. Yeah. She's got to fend for herself at That's this right. point. Explaining that he wanted his daughter to learn how to open a tin of beans, he said she tried for six, six. hours. Hours. That's the nutso part. Like, this isn't a story without the six hours. You know how so long... So if she does it for a half an hour and she opens it up, like, who, big whoop. Yeah. Like, she's smart. You know how a two-hour Mornings at the Cabin episode can feel like it's dragging sometimes when no. we're not at our best? How dare you? Imagine no? that. Plus another four <laughs> hours trying to open a tin of beans. And it wouldn't be this entertaining. It would just be us grunting and groaning <laughs> trying to get the thing open. And probably crying. She... <laughs> But he, this is a funny part, because he's quoted as saying, like, she was grunting and grunting next to me trying to get the thing open. And then he said, I should say, though, he prefaces it with, like, all the, actually, not preface it, post it. Um, I should say, after all this making of fun, uh, that spatial orientation, <laughs> process, visualization, and order of operation are not things that she intuits, which I'm probably mispronouncing, but uh, she, uh, in, in, yeah. It sounds like he's it's, a bit of a yeah, twit. A bit of a twit. Or yeah. she well, she's a bit of a twit, maybe. Uh, I knew this I mean, would be a challenge. I mean, she's nine. I knew this would be a challenge. I don't know. I feel like I could open a can at nine. I, I you know, like I don't really have any concept of what I was able to do or not to do. Or I, yeah, just exactly. like figure out myself it, right? at nine years. I could be remembering old. the first time I opened a can, but I was fifteen. Yeah. But I, I don't think so. I'm sure there's, you know, some school teachers who could basically tell you right now, yeah, a nine year old 
you know, probably could figure it out. You know, average five to seven hours, a nine-year-old could that's figure right. out that's how, right. how to use I mean, a that's opener. that's what I mean. That's the scale that they use at school. Yeah. It's like, can she open a can of beans? Nine? Well, if some cool. can openers are pretty huge, late. too. Pretty late. And if all they had was an electric can opener. There you go. You don't want her to use difficult. that thing. It'll take off the tip of her finger. Eventually, she was able to open the tin and ate the beans. So, happy, happy ending. Oh, hey. no, wait. That's not what happens on the internet. No. Uh, the backlash was ridiculous. Uh, he was called neglectful, called a bad father, uh, to, basically told by teachers that, like, what you're doing is wrong. Uh, the, one of the tweets was, teacher here, as, you know, as all teachers do announce themselves before they start talking. Um, but it, it always pops up in uh, in comments. It's like, space astronaut here, by the way. Um, <laughs> as a space as astronaut. As a space astronaut. Uh, one, kids learn best when they're not hungry. Yeah, very good. Uh, two, everyone learns differently and different approaches. Uh, ergo, uh, a guiding hand. Uh, are helpful, especially if, when, someone's struggling. Three, when a child is frustrated to the point of tears, you've lost your teachable moment. Yep. And I agree with all of Mic this. drop. Yeah, mic <laughs> drop. Pretty much. Um, but, uh, you know, people came to his defense. People that... Uh, but what's what's crazy about this backlash is that it went so far as to find, for people to go back into his tweets and find, th- find things that they found uh, either racist, sexist, or homophobic. So he was right. accused of that by the end of all this. So he's like, okay, sorry, guys. I was just trying to share a cute... What I thought was cute. <laughs> what I thought was cute. Hey, my my daughter doesn't come to me for help anymore, so I feel like I've taught her something well here. <laughs> I've never done a social experiment on my nine-year-old daughter before. Here's a teachable moment for all of us. Yeah. Um, and oh, and then uh, there's some results from that. On Sunday, the podcast My Brother, My Brother, and Me said it would no longer be using Mr. Roderick's music. So he's he's lost a bit of his platform. Yeah. And I mean, I don't, I don't think you need to lose your platform about it. I mean, maybe it's just something you shouldn't have put out there that you tortured your daughter for six hours while you sat there probably trying to come up with a jingle for <gasps> baked beans. You two, hold me, thrill me, kiss me, kill me, open my tin of beans. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast was recorded before a sort of live, thankfully not in the studio, audience. Brought to you by Aurora Ford, driving the north in the brand new 2021 Bronco Sport. Available now. Go check it out. It'll change your life. Um, what? Is, ooh, whoa. That's, a new vehicle uh, always makes you feel that way. I mean, I guess, yeah, there's not really a worry there because, like, it literally will change your life in that you have a new car. Got a new car now. Your life is different. That's right. Because you have a new car. Different path now. Okay, that's safe. All right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Just, I just wanted to make sure you don't nah, get yeah, yourself yeah, yeah, into yeah. trouble. Um, so we got to... Uh, as is uh, part of you don't know what to call it. I don't. It's I really so don't know what to rare. call it. It's so rare. Um, we got some fan mail, and now we get emails all the time. We get emails to the mailbox all the time. We're all privy to them. Uh, not all of them, obviously. Like if it's something directly at Ollie, he gets it, and it's you know for news purposes. Yeah, I think people know how email works. I don't know if they do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in 1969, a man named John Emmanuel Mail. Um, <laughs> Uh, so we got some fan mail, which is lovely. So uh, we got this, uh, yeah, just uh, no return address, no uh, anonymous fan mail. Mm. Now, when you opened this, you thought it may have been some sort of ricin attack, uh, you or know. you never know, yeah. unmarked, unmarked letters. So there are four letters here, one addressed to each of us. Uh, f- pardon me, five? Four. Four, four. letters, yeah. yeah. Uh, me, you, Ollie, and uh, AJ each got a letter. Yeah. They're lovely. They and are. we wanted to read a couple of them on the air uh, just to let you know, uh, everybody who's listening and everybody who may not be listening, uh, we are loved and you should listen to us. Um, <laughs> so that's what we wanted to do. So we wanted to summon uh, Ollie from the other side and AJ yeah. from the other side of the office. Long, lonely um, hallway. Just PTA2, is that right? Okay, great. Yeah. I don't know if he'll be able to hear you, but if you give him a call, I don't think call. we fixed this that did issue not work. from yesterday. This did not work yesterday. Yeah. So. But he'll know to come. That's right. That's fine. All right. See, it's not doing that ringing thing it's doing that it's thing. just doing the sonar yeah. radar thing yeah skype you know. sonar oh well they know to come so that's, that's right the... that's nah, they're on their way let's He's hit the music the... all right let's hit the music one second all right so we got uh yeah four beautiful letters four lovely letters all i could assume is this means that um Listener has spoken. The listener has spoken. Loves every one of us. Well, actually, I don't know yet. I haven't read them all. So maybe there's in, deep in the middle of one of these is like, listen, there's just some things you can improve upon. Um, <laughs> I don't like your attitude. Here they come. 
There they are, Ollie and AJ, licking each other's faces and eating sardines. This is <laughs> this is how this works. Is it? Is you just now like press a button and summon us with the ringing of a bell? <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah, that's yeah. right. Pavlov's Pavlov program, program director response. is here. That's yes. right. <laughs> Ring the news bell. Ollie comes a running. Woof. <laughs> or we'll get you to send others down. That's right. Yeah, send, send others yeah. as well. There yeah. we go. Little Bushwhackers theme. This is your new entrance music. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, pardon me. Are you tossing my letters on the floor? Your letters? I Did you write these? Well, I haven't read them yet. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> oh, no. It would make more sense oh. if he wrote them. Did he Ollie wrote them. just blow it? Yeah. Did he write these letters? Did you write these letters? This yeah. is an inside job. I All don't right. know. I honestly know. But okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. I wrote these. <laughs> let's start. What do they say? Then I'll tell you if I wrote them. Okay. Let's start with. We'll start with letters. Yeah. All right. Here goes. Oh, these, these are each different letters. These are each different letters. There are four letters yeah. in this envelope. One addressed to each of us. Okay. All right. So very lovely. Uh, do you have any other music we can play underneath this? No. Okay. Great. No. You just have to carry it. These absolutely. We believe silence. in you. We just have to have a carrot. Yeah. Okay. Um. No. Not me first. Where's, where's Lecter? Here we go. Uh. Dear uh, Scott Lecterman. Let come in. Hey, spell I got my name right, right and everything. I, I spell his name right. Yeah. I mean, it is there oh. on the internet, right? Um, I hope this uh, letter finds you in good health. Very nice. Not bad. I've been a fan of Mornings at the Cabin for some time, and your bubbly and happy mood and kind smile is wonderful to see and hear in the morning. No. Very nice. Kind of odd for radio. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. I mean, you yeah. can, you can yeah. hear you do your have smile. A nice smile. I've Wait a minute. told you can a dozen do times to Vaseline you? your teeth. Um, mm, yeah. So you get that, you know. Yeah. Right. As well, uh, you have a very fine taste in music. Yeah, right. Oh my goodness, yeah. very nice. She loves I, those eagle puns. <laughs> that's right. Um, <laughs> well, you said she. Do we know it's a she? Well, no. Sorry. I'm, assu- I'm assuming they, it's his they, mother. Listener, yeah. listener I, loves those eagle puns. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and a happy New Year. Yeah, very nice. So nice. Very nice. Let's see here. What do we got next? Dear Jesse Wheeler, I hope you are well today. Thank you. <laughs> I wish this. Uh, I wish this letter brings uh, joy and satisfaction. Your presence makes me joyous when you're on air. Your laugh is one that can bring a smile to any face. It makes any day uh, good or bad improve. Isn't that nice? Yeah. You do have that kind of laugh. That's right. They're not so worried about you being in good health, though. No, not I at all. Well, well, I, well, I mean, they, they hope it finds I mean, you well. They, yeah, yeah, that's right. Hope you're well yeah. today. Yeah, yeah, hope you're well today. Not yeah. tomorrow or anything, but... <laughs> um, well, we can't vouch for Just today. Tomorrow. That's yeah. right. Look, look, I've seen you in public. I don't know if you have more than a day left. Um... <laughs> Dear, I think I know who wrote okay. these. Dear Ollie Williams. Dear Ollie Williams. Mm, um, that's it. We were get to inform you. Oh, no, never mind. Um, <laughs> you have not been selected for standing at Oxford. Pardon me. No, that's, mm. not, that's not it. Uh, How your humor. What? <laughs> yeah. Your humor always makes my day. Very nice. You Aww. have a very good sense of humor, sir. Uh, your hard work and determination is amazing about you. You are a wonderful person to come into the NWT, and we would not be the same without you. Oh, Thank you for starting nice. Cabin Radio. Okay, for, first of all, <laughs> just the last time. <laughs> just all the last team? Line. <laughs> oh, she thanks. slips in an Ollie and team? <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, not even an Ollie and team. Just a thank you for starting Cabin Radio. With your own bare hands. With your own bare hands. From and the ground Nobody up. else. From, uh, and uh, these are all uh, signed from a fan. Yes. Very nice. Aphen. It's Aphen. Aphen. Oh, Aphen. Uh, dear Andrew Goodwin, I'm not sure who that is. Um, I hope you're having a <laughs> wonderful day. Your dance battles, dance battles with NNSL Media on TikTok always make me smile. Yes. You are deaf, my fave dancer. Hey. Whoa. Hey. Now, a little shorthand here. How too. many dancers oh. does she know? Your appearances for Cabin Radio One. videos as well as more. Mornings at the cabin always bring light. Uh, your management skills are admirable and definitely deserve appreciation. Okay, first. Uh, well, you again, don't know my okay, name. Now, now we know who wrote these. This is quite a long letter. <laughs> it's just like, and it gets smaller because it's getting so long. Like the last few lines are like, got to fit all this in. See um, page four. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Your management skills are admirable and oh. definitely deserve appreciation. <laughs> She's like, I should probably say something about his management skills. So, again, you said she, so I'm having a... I, I, I'm I just can't imagine a know. man doing this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, well, that's your own misguided sense of whatever. Um, <laughs> as well as you gave a very kind, warm, and welcoming impression when I first met you. Okay, well, that oh. sounds like you. Oh. That does sound like you. Well, that's The management nice. skills I, I would agree with. Yeah. Um... I feel like you do get appreciation, so let's just strike that. For I wouldn't the use the word admirable. No, right. Fair I would. I Present, would absolutely frankly, use admirable because yeah. I admire the fact that you could do any of that stuff. Um, 
You send I'm, us paychecks. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty yeah. good. It's pretty good. Uh, again, written from a fan. So yeah. very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice stuff. Two candidates in my head. Yeah. Might okay. have written these. Expose okay. them both. No. Nope. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I thought I recognized the handwriting a little bit. It kind of looks like Ollie's handwriting. It does. Quite frankly. Yeah. But Ollie I don't think I've ever seen Ollie write cursive. This is true. Not many people write so, cursive anymore. This yeah. looks like someone with very neat handwriting wrote with their left hand. Okay. Very good. <laughs> well, don't. We're not going to judge the hand. We're See, not going to judge the of, writing. All some right. of us are left at it to start with. That's right. All right, listener. And then I, I thought the letters were lovely, <laughs> and I will not criticize Ollie any was one of those of lefties them. who was uh, repressed and forced yeah. to write with his right hand oh. by like uh, colonial yeah, lords. I just take offense. Yeah, he's over here. Good oh, old, old, like good boss over here. Yeah, like is is busy Admiral with like boss. oh, yeah. these look like they were really nicely written by someone using their left hand. <laughs> well, guess what? Some of us start off with their left hand. Still, still better than mine. <laughs> Steady hand, AJ. Over oh, here and they with put his... the B backwards on cabin and then corrected it, uh, which is a common mistake I do. That's pretty At, upside what? down P. Yeah. The, the the D. Yeah, I do a D. Thing, I mean. Yeah, Cadden Radio. Cadden I'm like, whoops, Cadden that's not right. And then I switch the line to the other side. Cadden, Cadden Radio. Do you do that? All the time. Oh, no. really? Oh, yeah. When I write thanks <laughs> on an email <laughs> instead of thanks, I do that when I handwrite <laughs> as well. Here's your invoke. <laughs> this guy, yeah, this guy. Scooby this guy's Mac. back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Max. Thanks guy. for the invoke. Yeah. <laughs> you know it was like not auto generated. Yeah. AJ sent it by hand if it was the snacks for the invoke. Yeah, this is a guy with a lisp asking for snacks. Um, <laughs> that's exactly what you get from the end of that letter. Next. Um, well, thank you, listener. Thank you, listener. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Whoever you, you uh, happen to be. All he has it narrowed down to two. He's the investigative journalist. I'm sure we'll have the answer by lunch. And then we'll reach out properly. Uh, it's nice to know that people are listening. <laughs> and it's also nice to know that uh, we bring some light to people's day. I yeah. love that. Thank so you very nice. much. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast. A weird story out of, uh, well, Hollywood. And, you know, it doesn't get any weirder than them Hollywood weirdos. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um <laughs> 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 but uh, we, I, I noticed this one uh, yesterday because it was a, a, an actress that, uh, or an actor that I really liked uh, named Tanya Roberts who played uh, Kitty in that 70s show. And a lot of us grew up watching that 70s show. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was Donna's mom. Fantastic in that show. Just really, really funny. Yeah. And it was announced yesterday that she had passed away. So I was like, I mentioned it yesterday. And I was like, oh, that's, that's too bad. She's yeah. only 65, pretty yeah, young. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> later in the day, her condition was upgraded to alive so she's still alive so this was this was the, the, the weird one obviously getting a, getting that thing kind of wrong there's always these like celebrity hoaxes right where someone says oh so sylvester stallone died and then he tweets later on i'm very much alive yeah but that's what like it's great it's great it's great it's great but usually those like hoax uh, rumors come from like disreputable sources and as much as we rag on tmz right they are a pretty reputable source when it comes to celebrity news like, they usually don't post something unless it's true. Yeah. Or it's happened. Yeah, they yeah. were the first to break Farrah Fawcett's death, and then the same day, first to break Michael Jackson's death. Kind were, of made their head that way. Yeah, I guess they did break that. They I, did. Yeah. They were the first ones by, like, two hours. Yeah. That's kind of how they make their name. Exactly. Well, because uh, other death. news sources were like, we should probably vet this or make confirm it, and TMZ's like, boom! Confirmed. I knew the doctor. Um, <laughs> he gives me drugs. Yeah, that's right. He gives me propofol. So... Yesterday announced that she was uh, uh, dead, and now this became uh, this was a statement from her representative. So usually that's where it comes. Like he released a press, he did a press release, and what's coming out now is that he heard it only from the husband, right? Which is usually like that's the source. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the the husband tells the rep. The rep goes, okay, I'll release a statement. Yeah. I'll take care of everything. Don't worry about it. Um, so what happened yesterday is that uh, the uh, her domestic partner Lance was at the hospital when he saw Tanya's eyes closed. Closed. So what his, uh, the story that came out late, latest yesterday is Lance, her partner, uh, he went to the hospital getting a call from doctors that saying Tanya was fading fast because mm-hmm. she did collapse in her house. Right. So she was sent to the hospital. So it's all, it all like, it wasn't that she was like sitting at home and everyone's like, she's dead. No, she went to the hospital. Um, the doctors, apparently, according to Lance, the partner, the doctor said she was fading fast. It was gonna, she was going to die. He went to the hospital, sat in a room. She opened her eyes and tried to grab onto him, but her eyes closed, and she, quote, faded. Now, this is from Lance. He said he was devastated and walked out of the room and then the hospital and never spoke with medical staff. Right. So didn't speak with anybody, saw that she fell asleep and was like, oh, I guess she's dead, and walked out. Obviously, shocking, horrible moment for him. Yeah. But, I mean, that, that's what precipitated all of this. He went outside, was picked up by the rep, 
Um, and then he told the rep, like, yeah, she died in my arms, he said, which apparently didn't happen at all. Right. Uh, it wasn't in her arms. Um, and, uh, yeah, so her death has been greatly exaggerated because her rep now says she's alive, despite <laughs> the rep not only telling TMZ she died, but sending out a press release with that information. But we can kind of blame that on the on the, on the, the partner. Really? I, there's a few blame, avenues of a error here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, I, I would think, especially in the world of, you know, if, if you're the partner of someone who is who's a celebrity, yeah. who has, you know, fans who may kind of just gla- grasp onto anything, mm-hmm. any kind of news that comes out, you want to be very careful with the information of course. that you share. So when it's something like death, which is very, very final. Yeah. Um, well, you also assume that somebody's like going to get all that information you, before they tell you. You think you'd want to hear that directly from the doctor yeah. before telling the rep and then the rep telling the press and then, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Because these things can get out of hand really fast. But for most representation, I'm sure they get most of their information from the family. Like, I've been contacted yes. by the family. This is what happens. Right. Right. So in a moment of shock, obviously, for, for Lance, he went outside and just said she's dead. Yeah. And that's what the rep went with. And so all day, people thought Danny Roberts was dead. And, but she is still very much alive. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a... I mean, it's obviously a very strange story. It it, it's you can I can feel like a ton of sympathy for uh, for Lance, of course, whoever Lance is. Anybody involved with this? Yeah, because what, I mean, what a horrible like because now Lance is going to get dragged. Lance is going to get like I don't know. Right. Lance is having a bad day. Lance is probably having a really bad. Lance day. is having a tough day. Yeah. So how is uh, how is Tanya doing? Uh, apparently, <laughs> she's well, alive, she did she did so. collapse on Christmas Eve and she was put on a ventilator. Right. Uh, this is not COVID related, uh, apparently, but. Um, uh, yeah, apparently she's still alive, but I mean, that could obviously change very soon. Um, yeah, very, uh, an odd story. Yeah. We don't usually talk about this kind of stuff, but it hit me. And then like the TMZ recording of it and just like the, 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 the line of events is like, oh, this is very odd. Yeah. Very odd. But it can yeah. all be can kind of reduce to shock and not really knowing what to do. Well, and, and we've been so conditioned to believe that when something out of the ordinary happens, that something Something's fishy a mess. Is going oh, on. Something nefarious yeah. is going on. But, right? I, oh, you're absolutely right. I exactly what i thought i was like yeah. well, lance is up to something yeah what's lance up to oh, to... wow why why did you think she was dead and just leave trying Ooh. to cash in on that life insurance oh huh, lance oh yeah. we're all terrible mm. yeah. oh, we wish uh tanya a good recovery and lance i hope you're having a better day yeah My poor goodness. lance jeez <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for morning. This is why we don't talk about this stuff. Uh, this is going to do it for mornings at the cabin for uh, Tuesday. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Check out more from the show at cabinradio.ca and by following the Mornings at the Cabin Facebook page.